So Tim, help me. How do I pronounce your last name? <laughs> you pronounce it Freak. Yeah? Yeah, really. I always tell about Tim Freaky, for, for like, just like Eckhart Tolle, Toll, Tolle. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like the same. I never know with Eckhart. People, yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. So How do you pronounce Eckhart's second name? Yeah, in, in Dutch we say Eckhart Tolle. And right? what does he say? Yeah. Tolle? Tolle. Or Tolle. Or Tolle. Tolle. So you, don't, Tolle. you still don't know and you've done no. it. I don't know. No. When he lived in my friend's house, but I still don't know. And I, but I am Freak. It's how it's pronounced in yeah. England. It's Freak. Mr. Freak. Mr. Freak. How mad is that? <laughs> so you're a stand-up philosopher, yeah. but now you're sitting down. Yeah. Here in, in, in Holland, it's the first time you talk about this stuff here? or? Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, no. The, the first time I've been to the, a conference like this here, but I've, I actually came across and ran a whole retreat here some years ago, and uh, I went to the Happiness Conference, and mm. they put me on for a day. Magazine. Yeah, magazine, they put me on for a day, when I had my book Lucid Living, which I'm not sure what the translation is, come out in Dutch, but I'm not sure what it's, it's called in Dutch. Lucid Living. What's a good translation? Lu Lucide Leven. We, no. I think about that. Um, wh so what's the, what's the main difference between uh, English audience and a Dutch audience? Is there any difference? People have to uh, translate the stuff you talk about. In, you know, it's it's not daily stuff for them. They have to translate. Do you sense anything of that? that? It's more mental. No. 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 And I get a lot of Dutch people come to England hmm. to my retreats in Glastonbury. In fact, I've been meeting up with various Dutch people that have, that have come to Glastonbury and gone through the Mystery Experience retreat process with me, and have become friends. And and a lot of Dutch people come across. On a, on a regular basis, so that uh, what I love about the retreats I run is that although I do them in England, or I do them all over the world, but mostly in England, the, it's a completely cosmopolitan audience. Yeah. It's not people who are local, people, it's people from all over the world, and you're getting all these different nationalities. And actually, it doesn't seem to make any difference at all. The words you speak are secondary? No, I think the words are important, but um, the people who come obviously are very, um, are able to to make the linguistic leap, which is I respect immensely, so they've, they've got that ability. And then they, the place we're going is beyond the words. And mm -hmm. as that becomes more apparent, um, you meet through the differences. And then the differences, the fact that you know, there are these cultural differences for sure, becomes a great delight. It's like, oh, you're like that, and I'm like this. And, and it becomes, I see the beauty in that because you see what's behind it is one. Universal. Yeah, yeah, so you see the one coming up through the many, the one essence with all of these different qualities which come through different people, but and also through the vector of nationality and language, and, and I can appreciate that. But you do stand up, and uh, from my experience, English humor and Dutch humor, it's a little bit of difference. Um, is it hard to make someone from the Netherlands laugh? I, the, the <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult when you're working with a translator. Hmm. Because then you say the thing, then they translate oh, it, then yeah. they laugh. The moment is gone. And yeah. it's, like the, yeah. it's like a slow... Yeah. <laughs> um, but when people are... when, And I think an awful lot of the things that I do, you know, I, I'm, I'm very rarely you know, telling jokes. It's more about the, seeing the humor in the human predicament, and often just in the moment. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of that is things which I find in my body. So then it becomes something which is just funny anyway, just because yeah. you see the moment. So then I don't think it makes any difference. Okay. The mystery experience. What's it about? It's about this. <coughs> it's about the mystery of existence. What happens to consciousness when we notice the most obvious thing about our predicament, which is that no one knows what it is. So you can tell us what it is. I know. No. I can just tell you the obvious, that no one knows what it is. Mm -hmm. Um, and what I try and do in the book is just explore it because for me that's what my life me I've been so obsessed by the mystery that and I guess I started off probably thinking that the mystery was something I would solve hmm. whereas it's gone in a big circle and I've suddenly realized the mystery was the answer I was looking for because I've, as I if, you, if I go deep enough into it my questions dissolve into it. Mm -hmm. And what happens is a change of consciousness, which is hard to describe, which is why it's the mystery experience. But, you know, I've got words, I'm a philosopher, so I do my best. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that there's this, um, it's like, for me, it's being, I call it being deep awake. It's like there's awake, and then when I'm living in my story, when I've just got my idea, this is where I know things. Mm -hmm. And then that doesn't go, that's still there. 
uh, thank goodness, otherwise I'd be lost and wouldn't know who I was and where I was going. But underneath it, there's like, oh, there's this, this, like, what is this? What is, nothing's what it seems. This mm -hmm. isn't really here, you know, we know that. And, and everything turns inside out. And as I relax into that, there's this profound sense of oneness with everything. Because in the mystery, there's no differentiation. There's nothing that's known. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's discovery of what I call the deep self. It's like the, the, the ground of being is arising. I see it like, like I'm arising from the ground of being, meeting everything else which is arising from the ground of being, but it's all the ground of being. So there's this incredible oneness. And, and that translates itself in, in Tim, into this thing, as love. I find my fallen in love with everything. And, and that's something really in my body. It's like, oh God, this love of being. And not just being Tim, but being grass and being sky and being you, mm -hmm. especially in other people. So that my experience of life is suddenly transformed when I come into the mystery. So my so what I do in the book is to is to you know take people into this doorway, is to go into that profound sense of not knowing and find that at the heart of the not knowing, there is a kind of deep knowing of something before words. So that there's this strange paradox where I start with knowing, come through not knowing, and find this deep knowing. And the deep knowing, then I have to try and bring back to this through words as a philosopher and try and find ways of communicating it in a way that can lead people on that journey. And so the book is a journey into the mystery, which is both an exploration of yourself, an exploration of life, and ultimately a journey to love, a journey which opens you out into this loving being and being loving, engaging with life in a whole new way and entering into the adventure of being human in a new way. But this deep knowing, uh, can, it put, can it be put into words? Well, yes and no. But I guess that's like that with everything, really. It's, you know, like tasting something. Really, you yeah. know, everything. Music, how could you put, can you put that into yeah. words? Well, you know, yes and no. If, if, if you're familiar, if I say, oh yeah, I listened to a piece of music, had a kick-ass beat, and you know what that means, mm -hmm. you can go, okay, I've got an idea of what you mean. Mm. But if you didn't know what it meant, mm -hmm. yeah. what? And it's the same with this. If, you're, if people can find something which they go, oh, I know what that means, then you can communicate. So the place I start with on the journey is something that everyone knows what it means, which is wonder. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows what it's like to feel wonder. Sense so, of awe. Yeah, just that looking at this moment, rather than just going, yeah, but looking at it and going, wow. Wow, look at those daisies. Look at, feel that. On my just, ooh, just noticing this moment mm -hmm. and that wonder, and then that opens it up. I think that opens up a doorway through which you can start a journey which goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the mystery of what life is, which you can use words to navigate, but they're constantly pointing to you to the experience, just mm -hmm. like the description of the music is pointing you to the music that you want to actually hear, which is not beyond words. So, could you call it a tasting? Yeah, I use that word a lot, and 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 I think you know ideas is, is what we've got to help ourselves be conscious of all of this. So for me, the, there is one central idea which I introduce quite early on in the book, which has which unlocks a lot for me, and that's the idea that that we need to think about this in a new way because fundamentally life is paradoxical. That's its nature. The opposites in life coexist. They are both two and one at the same time. A bit like the yin yang. They had it mm -hmm. all that time ago. Is it yin? Is it yang? It's both at once and they interpenetrate. And our normal way of thinking, which I'm logical thinking, which I'm, you know, I think is great. I really think logical thinking is fantastic and, and admire it immensely. But it's only good on the surface of life because it's based on, it's either this or it's not this. Duality. Yeah, so and most pu for most purposes, that either or aspect of duality is, is fine. You know, we're either inside or we're outside. Mm -hmm. We're either doing this or we're not doing this. You know, you, you can understand life in that way. But then when you come to the, to looking at the depths of life, it's fundamentally paradoxical. And then you need what I call paralogical thinking, which goes, at the depths, it's not either or, it's both and. The opposites coexist so that, well, the example from what we've already touched on is, is that when I'm going, look, I don't know what this is, 
That's not altogether true. I have a whole load of ideas about what this is, and they're fairly useful in my life. If I didn't have them, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have this conversation. I wouldn't know what the words meant. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I know how to speak. I know what, you know, there's obviously I know loads. Yeah. You know how to do this. So I both know and I don't know. So I know here, but underneath, I don't know what life is. It's built on nothing. Mm -hmm. So, which is true, they're both true. Now, logical thinking has to go either or. And a lot of spirituality gets stuck in this either or, which sets this opposition up. For instance, you know, on the surface, here, everything is separate. We're separate. We're having individual experiences. We're individual centers of consciousness in a world full of separate textures and Smells. qualities. Yeah, yeah everything. <coughs> but underneath, it's all one. Now, one of the paradoxes I see is that a lot of non-duality can get caught up into either-or thinking, which, which sets up this, it's either one or it's many. So, manyness is an illusion, the separate self is an illusion, your humanity is a problem, get rid of all of that and then you'll see it's one. For me, that feels profoundly mistaken. So what I'm seeing is, it's both at the same time. So that we are both separate, and if we sink into our deeper being, we're also not separate. But the separateness hasn't gone anywhere, it's still here. And what I found running these retreats that I run, called Mystery Experience Retreats, is that it becomes much easier for people to experience, actually experience the profound oneness and feel the deep love, feel it in every cell in your body. If you, don't, if you, if you get that both and understanding. Because an awful lot of people understand it intellectually and then go, but I'm not experiencing it because this damn separate self is still here. It's my ego, my something, and if I could just get rid of that damn thing, you know, and it's like, stop thinking, stop thinking, or, you know, all these things which you can't do yeah. because separateness is also real. Yeah. <laughs> and it, fighting the separateness. And you're fighting the thing which is also real yeah. rather than going, right, this is real in its own way. And then there's the other pole of the paradox, and that's equally real, and I've missed that. So I'm stuck in the, in the story and I've missed the mystery. Or I'm stuck in the separateness and I've missed the oneness. But don't allow this. This is fine. It's beautiful, actually. It's fine the other as well. And it's really obvious. Or becomes much more easy to see. And then you've got both. And then, paradoxically, rather than disappearing and becoming some meaningless thing, the adventure of life, I think, becomes profoundly interesting. And, and the colours become brighter and it starts to sparkle. And the meeting of two individuals becomes... Not just like, hi, it becomes, wow, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is amazing. So there's self and no self both at the same time. It seems like that. Like yin and yang, but which is true. They're both true, depending on which way you, where you stand. Mm -hmm. I mean, the example I use is from uh, physics, because I'm, you know, I think we need spirituality to integrate with deep science. Uh, because it's, a, it's an objective study of the mystery, like spirituality is a subjective study of the mystery. And they fit paralogically. There. They, they do that as mm -hmm. paralogical pairs and what I love about science, there's so much I love about science, you know, one that I'm doing you know, right here, it's like, you know, here's my hand, to say it's not there would be insane. And if yet, I cut it off with yeah, a, it's like, yeah, exactly, it's, yeah. it's not really there, ah, you know, it's like, you know, oh, the Zen master, you know, <laughs> yeah. everything is emptiness, ah, oh, cool, yeah. blimey, that, did that hurt, yeah, you know, all of that. But it's also not there, you know, it's 99.9999999999, nothing. Yeah. So which is true? Well, they're both true. So what happens if we live in a way that we can see both? It's here and it's not here. And can we, that puts us in a very interesting place. Or the wave particle thing, you know, that you get in the light, you know, what's light? And it turns out that it's both a wave and a particle, it's, you know, which I love, it's both many mm -hmm. or one, depending on how you look at it. Which is it? It's both. Mm -hmm. And then you come to this and it's like, well, are we particles or is it a wave? Yeah. It's both. And if we can be authentic with both, then we can meet as these exquisite individual expressions of being, which are individual and, and different centers of consciousness, arising from the one field, the one wave. And then, rather than being we have the experience of being conscious and meeting as separate perspectives and also being connected. So we're separate and not separate. And when we're separate and not separate, that's when the love arises, it seems to me. When we get them both, that's mm -hmm. love.
you just feel, ah, oh, yeah, well, I love you because we are separate and not separate. So the recognition of love in everything, or... Yeah, yeah, and, and by love I don't mean, I do mean the, mm, mm, that's nice, but I, I mean love seems very big to me, because it, it, love seems is the thing which brings the two together as one, but there's still two. Uh, and it's like that, that, it's that dance or conversation or lovemaking. It's lovemaking, you know, it's a perfect example of it. So love exists on all these different levels, from, the, from sex to personal love to your children to your friends. And then there's this universal deep love, which is just for everything. Now, that's not the same, it doesn't have that personal quality because it's no personal relationship. But it has a universal quality and it's still there. And, it's, and, it, and it means you can even love your enemies, you know, it, it just means there's a love of being, not, not a liking, necessarily, mm -hmm. which means that love can also embrace suffering. In fact, you know, it seems to me, and a lot of spirituality seems to be about getting rid of suffering, but it seems to me that love entails suffering. Entails? Suffering. And what's entails? Oh, it, 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 it involves suffering. Hmm. You know, when I love my children, Yeah. That and they, means, I'm, yeah. I'm taking a risk, yeah. which is, if you know, I love them, and if they, you know, if something terrible happens to them, yeah. I am going to suffer when yeah. they suffer, yeah. and I'm willing to take that risk yeah. for love. That's the only way to love is to in know that it's going to include pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yet, what I think what's happened is that I think what's happened is that in the West, a whole generation, my generation, the generation before looked, started to wake up, looked around at Western spirituality, went, this isn't going to do it. It hasn't got what I'm looking for. And, and swept away this, this kind of moribund religion and went east and then imported that pretty much uncritically. So replaced a whole lot of Western religion with Eastern religion. Mm -hmm. And now I think what needs to happen is we need, need to present the same critique to those ideas which, are, which have become, within a few decades, so embedded that people take them for granted. Mainstream. Yeah. yeah. I mean, li ideas like enlightenment or, you know, you shouldn't be attached or have no desires, all these Eastern ideas, mm, which are fundamentally anti, you know, the Buddha's got his legs crossed, he's disappearing <laughs> off, you know, which I have, you know, these are deep, yeah. but they're one-sided because they're pushing away humanity. See, our humanity is attached, our humanity does suffer, our humanity doesn't have its legs up in the air, it doesn't down on the earth. And that, it pushes that away with well, the whole myth of, you know, look, if you do it enough and you're spiritual enough, you don't have to come back here. And you can disappear off the wheel and you're mm -hmm. free and all of that. And so we've imported these ideas and now we need to go through them and go, well, are they just perennial truths or are they just one culture's way in, which may have some truth and may not. And when we come back then to the East, the Western tradition, it's like, it's interesting, isn't it? Here's this guy in the East with his legs up in the air saying you can escape suffering. And then there's, here's this guy in the West tied to a cross suffering because of love. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, so one's imminent going, actually bring the love in and be yeah. willing to suffer. Yeah. And one's saying, get out, because that's where it is. And my feeling is, look, it's both. Yeah. And if we have this paralogical approach, we can go, look, it's both, both of those. Love being, be loving. And that entails embracing the duality, loving the separateness, which means being willing to be human, but also being willing to see that Back here, you are you are this this profound safety, this being which is not caught up in any of this, which is already unattached. Mm -hmm. So this isn't attached, and this is attached, and I, this doesn't have to be not attached. This is human, you know, but this isn't attached, and just to see them both. Which, 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 what I find is, there's, for me, there's a great relief in that, because suddenly. The way you already are is fine. You just yeah. have to notice something else. It's not that you don't have yeah. to make this, make this impossible thing to become something you're not. It will be a great title for your next book, "Loving the Separateness." Loving the it, separateness. Those three words. Yeah, that's very Include good. Everything. Yeah, yeah. I haven't thought of that yeah. as a title. Thank you. Yeah. So, what's what's the most heard question when you talk to people uh, about this? What, what, what's the number one question people will ask you? Ooh. Well, there's not an obvious answer to that question, um, because... Is it always the, 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 the big ego thing, that, ah, oh, I have to get rid of my ego, my ego is, 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 uh, is hurting me, or stuff like that, or I have a big ego, he has a small ego, is it stuff about that? It, or? It, it, what I find is with those things that really, is that they, they kind of crop up, 
without people noticing. I mean, I will actually talk about, look, I don't think this helps. And then I realize that people have got it, and then very quickly they revert to, there's something inside of me which is out to get me. <laughs> yeah, an enemy. Yeah, because yeah. they've been told that. You know, yeah. if someone says to you, which is often, you know, you should not be attached to your separateness, you should have no desires, you should stop thinking, you should not be attached, you should, and you inevitably are, then the voice in your head, which is your humanity, is your enemy. Yeah. And that's trying to get you, and it's stopping you reaching this. So now you're, now you're fighting, a, you know, you had troubles before, you've got spirituality, now you're fighting a civil war. <laughs> in civil your own war. head. Yeah. With yourself. Yeah. You know, and, and I suspect nearly all of us have been there. Yeah. Because it's been so prevalent, that idea. Disastrous. You know, there is no, and what I, for me, the twist came when I suddenly realized that little voice in my head, which is going, no, that's my wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> that's my intuitive wisdom going, you've spent 40 years, 50 years trying to be a human. Don't let it go now. <laughs> you know, it's going to die anyway soon, but just hang yeah. on to it now. Yeah. Be human. Yeah. And now it feels like, oh, thank you for keeping me here. Yeah. And, 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 and letting me see that I'm already this and this. I don't, I don't have to let go. In fact, I would say, I can only recognize this profound oneness of the deep self, which is one with all, by appearing as this separate thing. And that was a big insight for me, was going, look, this consciousness is separateness. The subject and object is, what are, is, is what's the whole of consciousness is predicated on. And in consciousness, when I look around me now, Every, uh, everything I'm conscious of, I'm differentiating. I differentiate you from the chair, from the grass, from me, from the camera, from here, from the sky, from the up, from the down. Consciousness is going, <laughs> that's how I'm conscious. Mm -hmm. You look at a baby, they're, they're kind of conscious, but they haven't, they haven't come in, and you see the Buddha. It's like, oh. yeah. But to become conscious, they have to learn to break it all up. Yeah. <laughs> now the problem is that when we've broken it all up, we get stuck in it. Yeah. And that's when we suffer and it's like this. But that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It's not like, so much of spirituality feels like people are coming, coming to you, you know, when you've, you've finally come in and they're coming up and going, it's all been a big mistake. You've learned to think and evolution has 13 and a half billion years to get to this thinking individual yeah. and what a fuck up. It's like, we don't want that. No, it's like, that can't be right. So what I'm saying is, no, no, through the separateness, we become conscious. Now that we're conscious, what the spiritual journey is, is to become conscious of being conscious. That we actually then, because we're aware of all of the different, the separateness, we can go, who's looking? Hmm. And as we do that, suddenly there's the oneness. Oh, yeah. there's a big space of awareness within which everything's arising like a dream. And I am that. And like in a dream, here I'm in the dream, and here I'm the dreamer and it's in me. Yeah. And they're both true at once. Mm. It, it's, which is it? It's both of those. And here, everything, I'm separate, and I'm experiencing the dream from one perspective, like you do, in a dream. And then from here, it's all me. Yeah. And well, it's not, it's not all Tim, because Tim's part of it, but it's all what I am. And, it, and, and then you get this lovely th sensation of, okay, so when I look in your eyes, I see the separate form, and which is individual and different, and that's why it's so attractive to me. And then what I'm connecting with through the eyes, I can't see. No. Your being. That's the being. And I'm this being that can't be seen looking, and you're the being that can't be seen looking, and then through the looking, the being, which can't be seen, which is out of this, is connecting with itself. So you sense... Fabulous. <laughs> yeah. You sense yourself in other other yeah. appearances. Yeah, that we're separate and not separate. Yeah. And, then, and, there's, and then there's that love or compassion or joy or whatever you want yeah. to call that. So um, when I shorten your message, could you say, um, don't fight the world, turn inwards? Uh, I, well, I certainly would say, well, you see, it, because I have this paralogical approach, you know, whenever I say one thing, I feel like I've got to say the opposite. <laughs> so, in one way, yeah, I'm saying don't fight the world. Don't, don't fight what's in you. Just, it's fine as it is. But I also think there's times when you fight yourself. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to fight yourself to wake up to oneness. Mm -hmm. You may have to fight yourself to become a better person, to be better to your wife or your husband, to be a better father, to be a better friend. To be better. All of those things you yeah. may have to work on yourself. But a wake up to what you are 
That's not, you don't have to do that. To wake up to what you are, that's already there. Yeah. And then when you do, and the way to do that, it is a kind of turning within, but it's also a, a coming out. Because the two go to, it's, for me, the, the journey is paralogical. So there's self-realization mm -hmm. and then there's self-expression. There's knowing yourself and showing yourself. If you like. It's the, the, the lo loving being and then being loving. And these two come together. So the, the further I feel like I've woken up to this, the more that love has propelled me into engaging with this. So there's a peace and a passion. And all of these opposites start to come together. And they're happening at the same time. So is, is creating, being creative, is that realizing self? I think so. I think it's the other side of it. Hmm. So that so that here it's, it, it, it really is a profoundly, ultimately, profoundly passive. You're coming into this place where you're just holding it all within you, just as it is, and it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. You love it just as it is, even the ugly bits. It's just, hmm. whoa. And then it comes through this, and it's creative, which means that can be better. Yeah. Let's change that. We want to engage. Let's make yeah. this. Let's yeah. bring this into life. How yeah. can I express this funny Tim thing? What yeah. can Tim bring to this dance? What, yeah. what verse can he sing? Let's join. And the and, and those are happening together. It's the, the the knowing and the expressing and the showing. Yeah. Are your books in, uh, translated in Dutch? Also, this book, the mystery experience. The mystery experience is not in Dutch yet. Oh. I, would, I would love it to be. We, uh, it's only just come out in English. You can ask Wim from Samsara. Wim. It's a fantastic book waiting to be published in Dutch. I think after this uh, talk, that's a piece of cake. Thank <laughs> you.